How are you? My God, it's been ages since I last got to see you wonderful Armenian people around the world. There's so many of you on this uh, show. I can't tell you. Tell me, actually, while we're talking, right, you can actually tell me what countries you're from. Put your name, okay, and uh, put how much you earn uh, a year. And also, where are you from? OK, so that I know that I'm talking to someone. Uh, if they're poor, I won't bother with you anymore. But if you're rich, mwah, we're friends. We're friends. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, I also want to point out that this is my first ever live show online. OK, so this is my first ever stand up live show online. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I, I have to tell you, I'm very excited. I truly am. Because since the uh, since the lockdown, I mean, let's face it, what's been going on with the lockdown? Armenians are freaking out. I've been watching in Los Angeles. There's no lockdown for Armenians. Armenians are like, <laughs> no, nothing. We're living. We're living. It's no problem for us. You know, you can cough, cough on me. Doesn't matter. Tuberculosis, gonorrhea. No, there's no such thing as gonorrhea when you've pandemic cause. But yes, this is what goes on, you see. You see, all over the world, all over the world. Uh, we have, I am from Glendale, Armenia away from Arm. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Guyana. To be fair, to be fair, I've been hearing a lot of rumors that um, Los Angeles uh, with the uh, the Armenians, you people, you just like, uh, let's go, let's go. Let's go and have a picnic in the middle of the street. It doesn't matter. We're not going to die. Coronavirus, coronavirus. Ah! But the thing is, the thing is, I um, I started off in lockdown thinking to myself, what am I going to do? You know, what am I going to do? So the first thing I did was I panic buyed. I did a lot of panic buying, um, which um, which I'm still going through. Um, and uh, I did a lot of that. And uh, I've been selling them for twenty dollars uh, uh, each one like this one, this one, twenty dollars. Yeah, and I'll sign it for you. If you want one, you can have one. But um, yeah, $20 there. And uh, and I've been doing a bit of panic buying. But uh, in the meantime, I've also been thinking, what can I do? You know, what can I do differently now that we're in lockdown? So you guys are at home thinking, hold on a minute. This is our first virtual stand-up comedy show with Kev Orkian. Fundukh per, fundukh. Bring the nuts, bring the nuts. I have mine. I have mine. <laughs> Okay, that's the first thing. Secondly, secondly, hand gel. Ask it sad. Okay, we can't do anything without hand gel. Can you please all, yeah, everyone. Okay, do it. Yes. Ah, I'll get us. Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, so that's it. That's the second thing. We got the hand gels. Now, third, third, listen, I'm changing my entire uh, approach to this, right? Because to be honest with you, OK, if Armenians are not going to abide by the coronavirus lockdown, you know, social distancing, you know, because we don't social distance, do we? Do we social distance? Of course we don't. You know what I mean? We get together. I don't want to kiss you. I don't want to kiss you. Kiss me. I'm not going to die. Yeah, but I might die. Doesn't matter. You die. It doesn't matter. I'll come to your funeral. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, but you're coughing. I cough every day. Why are you coughing? I smoke cigarette. Okay. But I quit about 20 years ago. Oh, really? Can't, can't. Don't get close to me. Please don't get close to me. Anyway, so. Okay, so let's clean all that. That's it. That's all done and dusted as well. Fantastic. So, are you sitting at home comfortably? Yeah? Have you got your feet up with your socks off and, uh, and your family around you? And to be honest with you, uh, I know this saw have asked uh, for families to pay money uh, to donate towards this wonderful charity. And uh, and they're hoping uh, by donating the money that you've paid, uh, they'll get four people per household to sit and watch me do a stand-up comedy show. Genten! They're stupid because I can guarantee you there are families right now around the world Sitting there with 70 of you having kebabs, baby surpazanna on it. Everyone's there sitting down, having a wonderful kebab, hummus, mummus, you know, everything. Corona, morona. Yeah! Doesn't matter. Yeah, everyone get together. Let's sit down. Let's really have a nice time. Don't worry. Shh. I paid only 40 dollars. 
Everybody else, shh, you pay me back. You, no, 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 no. I no, I pay forty dollars just for us, but we need to pay more because you know, blah, blah, blah. you give me the money. I promise I give to them. <laughs> Liar! But doesn't matter. Thank you for joining me. It's so nice to have you here. So now today's show, today's show is going to be very different because I'm not going to be able to engage with you uh, online. OK, because in a normal live show, I can come up to you and I can go, says, what's your name, where you come from, all that. Palabra. But now I can't do that. So I have to um, go on your live feed, the live comments where we have Nora, Ar Nora Armani. Oh, my God. From Las Vegas. Nora, I love you. I love you. Nora from oh, New York. Sorry. Wrong woman. Perhaps perhaps this is Nora. Someone else. I know. I'm just joking. Nora, you look like a ninja in your picture, by the way. Well done. Well done. You're keeping safe, are you? Really? OK. Uh, I am from Glendale, Armenia. Oh, no, we've had that one already. Uh, Baidzar from Little Armenia. We miss you, Kev. Baidzar, I miss you too. I truly do. There's so many people out there. I can't believe it. You know what? We put this out. We put this out to thousands. Betty and Araxi from Philadelphia. Oh, my God. we got people from Philadelphia. We've met you on the Queen Elizabeth and Queen Victoria. Yes, you did. I do remember. <laughs> I, I don't. But um, Adora, I live you. I love you. Oh, I live you too. Mm -hmm. Bravo. This is Armenians trying to do quick writing on the, <laughs> on the internet. Okay. To be fair, to be fair, I can still imagine there are Armenians who are opening their iPads going, I don't know how to work this. I can't find Kev or Ken on that. Where is this? So I can't get him. Get see, get see. Uh, why is it not changed? I can't change it. This is probably what's happening right now in a lot of Armenian homes where people are sitting there trying to uh, trying to still log on. I guarantee you we'll finish in 60 minutes and there'll be people still trying to log on. Chigatsadesna, can I have my money back, please? You watch. It'll happen. It'll happen. But um, uh, so we've got who we got? Rafi Jahenyan. Hi from Rafi and uh, Kim Jahan. Where are you guys from? Come on, say hello. Where are you from? I mean, I love you, she says, Nora. And I love you, too. I love you, too, darling. So welcome to the show. So I'm going to be doing quite a bit of comedy. I'm going to be talking about real life army. I'm going to be doing a little bit of piano. And uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of other stuff. So and then we're going to open it up to Q&A's. OK, now, this is your opportunity to uh, sit down. Excuse me. I'm doing what Armenians do. Exactly. Um, I'm going to do what I've not really done uh, a lot of. And that is I'm going to answer any questions you ask me. OK, so I'm going to be open to any questions. So you can ask me, Kev, how big is your earlobes? And I can tell you that they are actually an inch and a half in diameter. Yep, that's right. Why? Because when I was younger, my mother used to pull my ears and pull my ears and then pull my ears. And years later, she said to me, anyway, so there's going to be a lot of stuff going on today. And I'm going to start by saying, how are we all coping with lockdown? OK, because you're in different countries. Most of you are in America. I'm hoping we've got people in Australia. We've got people in Europe. We've got people in Canada and well, we've got Philadelphia. We've got, uh, you know, New York. We've got L.A. We've got loads of people all over the world. And by the way, I would like to applaud you <laughs> Woo! Woo! for raising so much money, so much money for that wonderful charity. Society of Orphaned Armenian Relief. We raised this evening $80. God bless you. There's about 300 people watching and we've raised $80. So that just tells you exactly what's going on. By the way, also my DVD. Now, there's a gentleman in in, uh, in San Francisco called Jerry Manukian. And Jerry Manukian is a wonderful human being uh, whose profession is in the medical profession. And he's got copies of this in America. So if you want a copy, OK, if you want a copy, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you. OK, to buy one of these for 10 bucks. OK, and we're going to donate. We're going to donate it to Saul. OK, we're going to donate. it. He's got 75 of them in San Francisco. If you want one, if you want one. OK, it's ten dollars. OK, and all the money goes to Saul. Boom. But I know what Armenians will do. You buy one. We all make copies. OK, quickly. We take this out. OK, put it in. And then what we do is copy, 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 copy. Ah! We have a copy. So I'll just sell one and the rest of it will be all copies. So uh, there we are again. Bravo, Armenians. Bravo. So anyway, 
Now on to uh, lockdown. What have we been up to? What have we been doing? Interconnecto. Have you been staying in? Huh? Huh? No, of course you haven't. We're Armenian. We don't get ill. We die. <laughs> okay. Now, I was meant to be going on tour this year. And I was going to be visiting a lot of cities. OK, which I still want to do. Ironically, I've never done Philadelphia. So, by the way, guys, if you ever want to invite me next year to do a national tour, international tour in Philadelphia, I'm there with my brand new show, Soup Armenian, uh, which is uh, my brand new show, which I think I think we're still going ahead at the moment, but we might have to delay it till next year. So what things have been going on since we've been uh, in lockdown? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I've been living with my mother-in-law. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. But but to be fair, to be fair, uh, since lockdown, OK, I've done a shed load of stuff at home that I didn't think I would do. No. Nope. <laughs> what did I do? Well, I decorated the house three times. Yeah, they can come. Three times I decorated the house. Why? Because I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. I'm so bored, honestly. It's just like, it's just really upset. I, coronavirus, coronavirus, chiga, chiga, sukhosingo, sukhosingo. Okay, so anyway, on that subject, I will say that um, since lockdown, decorated the house three times, my garden, my garden looks better than Queen Elizabeth's. OK, that's how incredibly beautiful my garden looks now. And I've discovered that I actually have a family, which was amazing. I've got twins and I've got a wife. Didn't even know. Uh, that's how busy I've been since. Uh, but now that we're in lockdown, I've got to see things that I never thought I'd see before. Yes. You know, um, and I've discovered I've discovered that I'm actually a really, really good cook. Yeah. So I've been actually getting into a lot of Armenian cooking, you know, and I've been doing the mantas and the dolmas and the um, mantas and uh, the kebabs uh, and you know all that kind of stuff and the rice i've been cooking a lot yeah i've been cooking a lot and i've been doing very well thank you very much so uh, on that subject by the way have you people in america been doing that clapping thing where everyone claps every thursday at 8 p.m for all the medical and key workers and people out there who are still out there do you still do that answer the question let's have a look jerry money comes but we have 50 many dvds love eli mihat araj Ara. We have so many DVDs. Love Eli Mihad Ara. Jerry, just stick to speaking in uh, English, my man. Honestly, honestly, I love you, Jerry. You're probably drunk because uh, Jerry makes up his own wine at home. He does. He actually makes his own wine. Do I have a bottle of your wine here? No, I don't. I usually have a bottle. I must have drank it. Um, he actually makes his own wine and then he sits there and he gets drunk. Um, and uh, it's good fun. And, uh, and he does that with heroin. Now, uh, who else have we got? We've got some other people joining on now. Uh, so, yeah. So, guys, listen. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hello from Amsterdam. And there's me talking about drugs. There you go. Yeah. No, we are Armenian. We don't do drugs. We don't do drugs. We sell them. <laughs> we sell them. We sell them and make lots of money. So I've been doing a lot of that. Um, not drugs. Um, I've been doing a lot of um, connecting with people, people I haven't connected with for a long time. OK. Um, and I've been um, I don't know about you, but I've got a quite religious. Have you since lockdown kind of praying to God going, please, Hajis, let's get out of this. Let's go. I don't want the coronavirus. I don't want the coronavirus. I've been doing a lot of that. I have. And I'll tell you something now. Not only have I been doing a lot of that. OK. Not only have I been doing a lot of that, but in actual fact, I've connected on a different level. OK. With the almighty. I really have. And I've been speaking to him about the coronavirus and and I've come to my own conclusions. I have. And my conclusion is that coronavirus uh, was man made. Uh, and the reason it was made was that so that people could stay indoors and understand and learn from each other um, and be caring and loving um, and, uh, and, and, and honestly learn new things about one another. So all those conspiracy theories that it was man-made so it could bring down the economy and Donald Trump and uh, and China and this and that, whatever, that's all rubbish. It really is. It is all rubbish because I, I'm one of those people that truly believe that coronavirus uh, is, is here to stay. It is. So I think from now on, we're all probably going to be walking around with uh, masks. 
okay so all those butt cheeks and uh, and all those cuddles and things it's it's all gone now it's all gone i can just see armenians now going pare pare from a, a mile away and uh, and then uh, no kissing no touching nothing do you think we could do it do you think armenians being the most hospitable country in the world could do that do you think we could actually not get together and kiss each other huh tell me maybe we go <laughs> so yeah so that's what i've been up to so 10 weeks 11 weeks we've been in lockdown and that's what's been going on what about you guys how long have you been in lockdown let's have a look at some of the other questions what have we got here by the way if you come up as a facebook user okay and you don't put your name then i'm not going to see who you are so do put your name hello from las vegas hey yeah start spreading that's New York. So, Las Vegas, how you been doing? I miss you. I was meant to be there. Hold, hold on a minute. Mais, are we in mate? Yeah, hold on. I was meant to be there now. That's right. May the 25th till the 31st, I was going to be in Las Vegas doing my one-man show at the Tropicana Hotel. But thanks to Corona Morono, I'm not there yet. So, we've rescheduled that. So, I'll be back in Las Vegas next year. Uh, and I'll be there to uh, to uh, entertain everyone out there. And actually, I'm going to be probably going on tour again uh, next year uh, with my one man show so that we can uh, do a. Re I mean, listen, we're going to have to have a real laugh with this now. OK, because I truly believe, OK, when they do that two meter rule where you can't get close to two people and the theatres are going to suffer this, that Armenians won't care. Armenians won't care. I, I, I reckon Armenians will just get back there, sit next to each other and go, oh, pardon, <coughs> love it, love it. Yes, I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very good. I'm very good. You look ill. Yes, you, you looked okay when you came, but <laughs> you look ill. So that's probably what's going to happen. But, uh, but we've got people from all over the country at the moment. I can't believe I'm still reading this. We've got Albany. <laughs> Facebook user. So we don't know who you are. But we are we're saying hello to you from Albany. So there's many, many people around the world. I do you know what? This is going to be amazing because truthfully, this is the one of the best things we can do to raise money for all those wonderful, wonderful orphans who need our help. OK, and that's what it's all about. To be honest with you, this is very close to my heart. Uh, orphans. It really is. Uh, I'm actually one of the uh, patrons to an orphan uh, uh, charity here in the UK. And. Uh, and actually, now that I've had twins and my twins are six year old, OK, I've actually been thinking, should we adopt? Should me and my wife think about adopting? And the reason we're uh, avid, um, you know, uh, patrons to an orphan uh, society is because my wife also ran an orphanage in uh, Mufalini in South Africa. Now, you might not have known that. Yeah. Wow. So that's what she did. And she ran it in South Africa, which was absolutely fantastic. She ran that for nine years. And um, when we got together, she said, come to South Africa and see what I do. I said, OK, I'll come. I'll come. So I went to South Africa and I met 28 orphaned children who she looked after. And each one of them called my wife Mama, which kind of worried me when we first got together, because you think to yourself, <laughs> OK, uh, but no, it was all right. She she was um, she was a Christian girl. <laughs> Christian. Chat Christian. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. So she basically uh, said to me, yeah, I run an orphanage. So that's why we're very, you know, we're very affiliated to the uh, orphan society. So much so that we had a conversation only last week, only last week about actually adopting. The problem is we still can't come to a, a, a conclusion and an agreement about adopting because uh, she wants to adopt uh, a, like a two or three year old from South Africa, whereas I want to adopt a 16 year old from Sweden. So we can't really come to a, an agreement on that one yet. So we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, you never know what might happen. Boom. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. So. Uh, on to Armenians uh, and Armenians adopting Armenians. I think this is a very important thing. Um, I, I truly do. And I think there's a lot of Armenians out there, great Armenians doing great, great stuff, including Saw, which is what I'm, uh, you know, doing the charity for. And uh, and I believe we've got quite a few people in. Uh, yes, adopt from Armenia, like my wife, Danielle, and I did. Ah, oh, Rafi, did you really, babe? Did you really? What did you adopt? A girl or a boy? Uh, what did you adopt? 
which, um, you know, which, uh, which uh, gender. Although we can't talk about that now, can we really? Because it could be gender neutral. The baby could be gender neutral. We don't know, do we? Because in Armenians, in Armenians, we've got to open up to that um, idea, don't we? Do we or don't we? No. Adam Yevyeva Gaminak. Adam Yevyeva. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve and something else. No, we don't do that. Leave it. Oh, Armenians. Do you know what? I love each and every one of you. I am the luckiest human being on the planet when it comes to Armenians. Yes, a 12-year-old girl. Oh, bless you. That's wonderful. God bless you, Rafi. That's wonderful, mate. A 12-year-old girl. By the way, are you still eating your fundus? Uh, a 12-year-old girl from Armenia. And you're giving her hope and uh, you're giving her an opportunity in life. <laughs> this would never happen. Me sitting, doing a one-man show. And still eating at the same time. You won't believe it, but I've got nothing on underneath. I have it! I've got nothing on. I'm going to stand up at the end of the show, so stay with me. Now, I have to tell you, I want to do something special for you today because I had the privilege as... There you go. Corona! Corona! Did you mean him? Hello from Corona. <laughs> Hello from Corona, New York. I love it. Love it. Uh, so, as you know, I was in Armenia. Curious from, oh, my God. Now, hold on a minute, everyone. Bourbonne. Bourbonne, Illinois. Is that spare toilet paper in the background? Because this. I'm selling this. $20. It's yours. Take. You can have another one. Okay. You can have another one. However many you want. Ha, take one, take one, take one, take one, take one. There we go. Wait. Ah, I can't believe I did that. Okay. So, I'll tell you what. I'm so damn talented. It's, it really sickens me how talented I really am. But anyway, uh, not as talented as Kim Kardashian, though. Let's face it. I mean, come on. That woman. Woo. She's amazing. A lot of you go, ah, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Well, uh, let's move on. Uh, we got some more. We got Corona New York. We got Curious from here. We got, is this, uh, what's this? Is it me, Suzanne, your buddy? It is me, Suzanne, your buddy. Suzanne, I hate to point out the facts, okay? And please do not be offended. But I don't have a friend called Suzanne. Has that really upset you now? Are you like sitting there going, I'm not. I was his friend on Facebook. He knows me. He's never replied, but he always sees my, my, you know, and sometimes he likes it and then he doesn't like it. I don't know what's going on. I'm Suzanne. Don't you know me? I met you 13 years ago in uh, Los Angeles at the show. You came up to me. You kissed me. You push me, but then you kiss me. <laughs> you don't remember? No! I've met thousands of people. How would I remember you? Anyway, Suzanne, thank you for joining me, you beautiful lady. Well, I don't know if you're beautiful or not. I don't know if you're beautiful. I'm just second guessing that one. Because if you're under 40, you're probably beautiful. So now uh, I'm going to do something special because I had the privilege of uh, going to Armenia. And, oh, by the way, uh, on that subject, my documentary, Armenia Uncovered. Ooh, let me hear you say it. Let me hear you say it. Ooh, that's right. Yeah. Armenia Uncovered. It's, uh, it's going to be streaming on Amazon Prime next week, we hope. We're going to be streaming it next week on Amazon Prime. So you can stream. We'll let you know. Just join my Facebook page, guys, if you've got it there, by the way. It's Kev Orkian Official, okay? If you join that page or my Instagram or my Twitter. Oh, there you go. They're right in the bottom there, look. Da, 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 da. Uh, Facebook, yeah, uh, Kev Orkian Official. If you join that page, you will see us announcing that we are going live with Amazon Prime and Armenia Uncovered. It was one of my favorite, favorite, um, uh, you know, experiences. An actual fact, next year, uh, we're going back out again. We're going to do another Armenia Uncovered 2, and then we're also doing Armenia Uncovered 3, which is, um, we're going to uh, name it a different uh, title. I'm going to climb Mount Ararat. 
Yes, I'm going to get right to the top. I'm going to do a whole documentary on it. And I'm going to go there with Kim Kardashian. So we're going to climb to the top of the mountain. No one, no Kanye, no my wife. No one's going to see what we're going to do. Woo! Oh! Kim. Oh, Kim. Oh, Kim. I love you. We're going to make a love. We're going to make a love. We're going to make a love. Love, 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 love. Together. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Sonny Audrey. So, oh, here we got another one. Kim and I have been working with you and Nick. I work with Saul. Not that, Kim. Not that, Kim. I'm talking Kim Kardashian. Yeah, not that Kim. That Kim's beautiful too. She really is. But um, yeah, so no, I've been, uh, you know, I've been doing my bits and bobs. Anyway, so I went to Armenia and I did the documentary and one of the pieces uh, in the documentary uh, was a piece called The March. And uh, and I thought what I would do is I would give you an extract of that piece of music. OK, I'm not going to play the whole lot because we haven't got enough time. OK, and the piece is quite a long piece. So I'm going to give you a piece on that. But what I was going to do was I was also going to do a nice little commemoration to all the Armenians that have been watching. And who are watching, I think, like I said, I think we've gone up to a thousand. Now there's a thousand people watching and we've raised now eighty seven dollars. So someone, someone hasn't actually paid full price. OK, they're actually missing thirty three dollars out of the seven dollars. So thirty three dollars they owe us. OK, but it doesn't matter. We've got a thousand people. They're all crammed into their homes, sitting on the sofas, on the beds, on the cushions, everyone on the plasma, everyone. people outside, people who are not even Armenian. Who were sitting out in the uh, in the bank going, oh, it's OK, man. We know we got the coronavirus, but we like to watch it through the window. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. I got a temperature. It's hot. Is it hot in here? So, um, yeah, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a piece. Of, uh, I'm going to do the middle bit because the middle bit is a beautiful bit. And I'm going to do that bit for you. And I'm going to dedicate it to all the Armenians out there. But more importantly, all the wonderful uh, people in Armenia who right now are going through uh, such a hard time with coronavirus as well. I'm going to dedicate this to you guys and I hope you enjoy it very much. And it goes something like this. That little bit. I'm not going to do too much. You can see the whole and you can listen to the whole piece on Armenia Uncovered, which comes out next week. I hope. Um, so anyway, so now what I'm going to do is in a little while, I'm going to start asking people to uh, start asking me any questions they feel they would like to ask me here in the UK whilst we're in lockdown. Now, um, I've got a Facebook user that's been saying, been with you since your first appearance on Armenian Music Awards. Saw you last in Mountain View, California, was looking forward to seeing you in Fresno, California. Alas, alas, seriously, what are you, Shakespeare? Now, from uh, from my couch, loving you as always. Shh, my husband's watching. Okay, from Northern California, Hasmik Gregorian. Hasmik, when you say shh, your husband's watching, what does that mean, sweetheart? You know, uh, don't get me into trouble with your husband, okay? I have enough problems of my own. Okay, I have enough problems of my own. Only two weeks ago, my wife, my wife stepped out the uh, kitchen door in the back garden and broke her ankle. True story, this. True story. And by the way, Jerry, if you're watching this, okay, with your family, and I love you all, mwah, 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 listen to this. You'll be so proud of me. You would. She stepped out the back. You know that Super Armenian tour I'm doing next year? Listen to this. She stepped out the kitchen in the back door. As she stepped out, she missed the step and her foot went right underneath her and it broke her ankle in two places. And the other foot, to compensate, 
Unfortunately, it went as well, and she ripped all the ligaments in that foot. Boom! The woman is now wheelchair bound. Great. Okay, but her foot was the other way. Now, if honestly, it it didn't look very pleasant. I'll be honest. She was lying on the floor, and her foot's looking the other way. It was like, oh, get us go. You know, it was one of those. Uh, yeah, hey, come back. So, uh, but she, I think it was pointing to the direction of you, stupid K. You should have got. You should have gone that way. But anyway, her foot was there. So, do you know what I did, Jerry? Do you know what I did? I turned her foot back. Yes. Because that's how Armenian I am. I got a foot. It was in the wrong position. I went crack, 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 crack. And I cracked it back. Oh, it hurt. And she looked at me as if she wanted to kill me. But who cares? I, I'm used to that look. Every day she wants to kill me. Every day. I've got used to it. So I turned around and said to her, I've done it now. We've called the doctors. She went into hospital. And basically she'd broken her ankle in two places. And the other uh, foot she'd uh, ripped all the ligaments. So now she's wheelchair bound. Yes. So now I get the chance of going anywhere in the house. She doesn't. <laughs> but I still love her. I still love her. I still love her. And anyway, so check this out, Jerry. Not only did I turn the foot back round, but the following day, the following day, the doctor said that if your husband hadn't turned your foot around, we would have had to amputate it. So now my wife owes me so many, so many favours. And you know where I'm going with that, don't you? Yeah. Je t'aime. Je t'aime, je t'aime. Je t'aime. Je t'aime, je t'aime. Chemo zergo. I don't care. Chemo zergo. I don't care. That's right. Because I saved her life. I saved her foot. She owes me. It turns out, listen to this, Jerry. She's got three plates in her foot and 12 screws. 12 screws! Her foot's had more screws. Listen, I'm not even going to go there with that joke. So the thing is, yeah, uh, me and my wife, um, I've been looking after her ever since. I mean, to be honest with you, hi, Em. We are meaning, we know what we're doing, don't we? We know what we're doing, yeah. Armenian men, yeah, we know what we're doing. Well, I do. Yeah, I'm not like the old-fashioned Armenian men. My dad is a little bit, uh, you know I mean? He comes to, oh, I'm inch PDF, inch PDF. What am I going to cook? What am I going to cook? What am I going to do? Huh? Toilet, clean the toilet. What are you talking? I only clean, I don't clean. I leave it. It's everywhere. And my wife, she cleaned it, make it look nice. You know? And um, and that's another thing as well, you see. What do Armenian men, okay, uh, and uh, anniversaries and toilet seats have in common? They miss both. Yes. That's right. They miss both. Oh, that's why I got married on my birthday. Mm -hmm. I'm not stupid. I got married on my birthday, so I never for ever forget when I got married. Yep, that's right. Now she forgets. Yeah, so I get one up. <laughs> Fantastic. So there you go. So apart from that, we've had quite a few other comments coming in. Uh, I can't wait to see you, that lol you, uh, Kim. Hi, Johnny. Uh, we got, what's this one? Can Basurma cure Corona? Right, let's answer that question. Okay. Hi, can Basurma cure Corona? I tell you what it can cure. It can cure you never speaking to your mother-in-law again. Yes. See, on purpose, most days, I eat a raw onion. And then my mother-in-law comes and goes, I'm staying tonight. And I go, good. <laughs> and she goes, bye. Yeah. So I'm not sure if uh, Buster and I would cure uh, my mother-in-law. But Corona, we don't know. What does cure Corona? Yeah. I don't think anything does. I don't think it does. I think what we have to do is raise our immune systems. Yes, that's right. Raise our immune systems by eating Armenian food. Yeah, that's like your hummus, mummus, kebab, mebab, you know. And uh, hey, can you imagine? Can you imagine if the one vegetable that cured Corona was bamya? <laughs> can you imagine the hairiest vegetable in the world? I think the British version is called, is it ladies' fingers? Is it ladies' fingers? Bamia. Bleh. Can you imagine? The hairiest vegetable in the world cured Corona. I would much rather have Corona. I would. I would much rather have Corona. Because I couldn't put that hairy vegetable in my mouth if you tried. That's like putting, that's like putting a hairy Armenian finger in your mouth. Yeah? It's not going to happen, is it? No. And they said Armenia had found the cure. 
So I shared it. I said, oh, I'm really proud. Armenia's found a cure to coronavirus. Yeah. Um, turns out it's just fake news. Fake news. It's fake news. Good, good, good. It's fake news. And uh, and it's absolutely rubbish. Apparently there's no such thing. And uh, people are still trying to find the cure. You're not going to find it. There's no cure for coronavirus. There isn't, and there never will be. It's like the flu, okay, and like syphilis. Uh, you're never going to find the cure. And uh, and gonorrhea. Uh, let's face it. Let's face it. Not that I've had gonorrhea. Not I've never had gonorrhea. Ooh, never had it. And I'll tell you something else as well. What's the difference between love and gonorrhea? Gonorrhea lasts forever. Yeah, and herpes. So now I'm going to do something else on the piano. OK, I'm going to do something that I always do in most of my shows, but I've got people all over the world watching this show right now. I've got people in prison watching it. A lot of Armenians who've been dealing, you know, these like, fake gels and, you know, the uh, oh, and, you know, the masks and whatever. And they've been caught and they're in prison. So, I'm. Um, uh, by the way, if you're in prison now, hello, hello. And, uh, and I hope you're doing well. So I'm going to do something special. For you. I'm going to do a beautiful song. OK, for all the beautiful women around the world that are Armenian, which narrows it down to, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. It doesn't narrow it down, it doesn't narrow it down. This is a beautiful song that I wrote for all the beautiful Armenian women out there. And it's called, All the Things That I Want to Say About the Beautiful Girls of Armenia. Okay, and I hope you enjoy it very much. He goes like this. girls in Armenia. Thank you. Now, I, I feel that it's probably about time that we had a few Q&As. So a few questions and answers that you would like to ask me. Uh, and uh, here we go. Please add on. Yeah, please add your name. I thought that was a message for me then. Please, please add, add your name at the end of the message. That way I'll know who I'm talking to. OK, so um, anyway, so let's do that. Where's my oh, here's my hand, Joe, because I've just touched the piano. Uh, so now we're going to do this. By the way, I've still got loads of toilet roll if you're uh, interested. I can sign it for you and I can send it to you. So please do let me know. There's probably Armenians still out there looking at the rape iPads going, <laughs> how do I get, is this show happening today? I don't know what's going, hello. I, uh, I can't see, ah, bet. Anyway, so um, there's probably people doing that. And there's probably people late as well. There's probably people late to this show. Why? We're stuck in traffic. You're not allowed out. You're not allowed out. What was that question, Nick? Put that back on again. How are Sanazar and Baghdazar any progress with discipline? Hagop and Nora from Los Angeles. Well, <laughs> Sanazar and Baghdazar, both of them, as in Luke and Jake, are doing all right, actually. Uh, they're really good boys. And uh, they, well, they're good with me. They're good with me. Okay, they're not good with their mum. Uh, they're very, um, yeah, they're very lippy with their mum, you know. But, um, but they're good with me because, you know, I've come, I've come up with a new technique. You see, because I mean, and I know there's a lot of children watching as well. So I just want to let you know. Yeah, I want to let you know. Don't think you've got the upper hand on us. Don't think this. OK, if you're under 15, don't for one minute think you've got the upper hand on adults. And I'll tell you for why. Because since and I know we're talking about the orphan uh, relief here, but there are children around the world and my children included where they will misbehave. OK. And you might want to discipline them by putting them on the naughty step. Yeah, the naughty step. Go and sit on the naughty step. Why am I sitting on the naughty step? Because you were naughty. Go and sit on the naughty step. But I don't want to sit here. Go and sit here. OK, you don't want to you don't want to smack them because that's not good. You want to tell them and you want to. My sons have got that used to it. Right. That used to the naughty step. They now punch each other and they go and sit on their own. OK, they don't need me to tell them. OK, they got that used to it. 
But that's not enough for me. Because I was brought up, you know. Hingach butter, you know. I got that kind of treatment. So I thought to myself, and recently, both my sons were being really rude. And it got to the point where I thought, enough's enough. I need to smack them on the, you know. And then I thought to myself, shall I or shall I not? Shall I? And the Armenian, you know, voice in me said, Amir, do it, kill him, kill him. And the British voice in me said, don't do it, because they'll call NSPCC, the National Society Prevention Cruelty to Children, and they'll have you arrested and you'll go to prison. And I thought about this, and then the Armenian stepped over my head and shot the English, and then stepped back again. And I thought to myself, ah, I could do this. I could do this. And do you know what? You know when they say, where there's a will, there's a way. As soon as lockdown is lifted here in England, it's simple. I'm now adding a book with all the dates on all the times they've been naughty. OK, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them on a flight to Armenia as if it's a heritage holiday so they can learn about their culture. <laughs> OK, and I'm going to take them there and I'm going to beat the crap out of them. OK, with sticks and belts and tear licks and everything. I'm going to beat them up. OK, because over there. It's OK to do. You don't get arrested. They join in. People you don't even know from the streets. They just get out of the houses. They go, can I have a go? Of course, beat them. Baba! Baba! And then suddenly this woman goes, nah, he's not your baba. Is it? You know, oh, it's brilliant. But that can only happen in Armenia, not in England. So I would get arrested in England. So, yes. So question and answers. Uh, is there any up there that we can have a look at? Why did you? Oh, here we go. So what should Armenians do if we can't hug and kiss each other, uh, considering we are very lovey, touchy people? You know what, Guyana? That's a good question. And it's very simple. Get married. Get married. Because once you get married, you won't be allowed to touch anyone. Because your husband will be like, why are you kissing? Why are you kissing? Huh? You're having an affair. What are you doing? Why are you, why are you kissing him? You kiss him three times. I watch you. Huh? You want a divorce? We go home. I beat you. <laughs> I'm just joking. We're not like that. Yes. we are. So um, what would we do? Do you know what? I'll be honest with you. By Christmas, we're all going to forget this ever even happened. We really are. We're going to, I mean, we're the most hospitable people in the world. We're going to get back to, um, we're going to get back to uh, kissing and hugging and all that palaver. We're going to be doing that anyway. So uh, what's that? Why did you use Turkish in your song on Britain's Got Talent? Get over it, you freaking idiot. Get over it. My parents were born in Turkey. Dundukh. That question has been asked to me so many times. It's seriously. Why did you sing Turkish? Why did you do it? Well, let me tell you. When you've been told that you can't do the routine that you have planned to do because they are stopping you because they want you to fail on Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. Then I went on there and I thought, forget it. I'm just going to have a good laugh and, uh, and have a giggle. And why shouldn't I uh, sing a, a few words in Turkish? My mum and dad were born in Turkey. I speak Turkish as well because that's how talented I am. Yes, I speak a few languages, including body language. Woo! Sexy. Sexy. No, I'm not really. I'm not. In Zinai. Deny. So, yeah, so no. Um, so that's a good question, but get over yourself. Any other questions? Uh, anything up there we can have a, look, a quick look at? Uh, if not, if not, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. My next routine. And uh, oh, hold on a minute. Please do a documentary about Armenian orphans and raise the awareness. These kids need so much care. Do you know what? I think that's a great idea. The only problem for me doing a documentary about Armenian orphans, which I would absolutely do, by the way, hands down, if so. If Saw comes on board with me and my producer and my director and says, right, let's do this next year, hands down, I'm going to say it online to everyone watching, I will do it. We'll produce a documentary all about the orphans of Armenia. OK, but the problem with me is I know I'll probably end up wanting to bring one home or two or three because, you know, what when you see those children and and and. You know, the way they are, you just, your heart melts, doesn't it? Your heart melts. It really does. It did when I went to Sweden 
and I saw that 16 year old. So now let's have a, another question. I love Saw. I have been supporting the organization for many years. I sponsor a boy in Kharabert, where I was uh, a boy in Kharabert, Kharabert, where I was raised. It is very special. Do you know what, Guy? That just makes you a special person, doesn't it? I mean, anyone who, who adopts, you know, a child is a special human being. You know, so I think that's a, that's a that's a wonderful thing to do. God bless you. So, um, oh, you said you're making dolma these days. Does that mean you're still picking your nose? Dolma porelskit. Remember it? What? No, no. I know. Yeah, I remember that. Do you know what? You people are amazing. I can't believe some of those. I mean, I've done. Do you know I've actually done? Believe it or not, eighteen, eighteen. No, no, sorry, they're all children. I'm lying to you. I have done. Oh, it is. It is actually. I apologize. 18 world tours for the Armenians. That's 18 different shows uh, for the Armenians. That's amazing. And do you know what's more amazing than that? The amount of Armenian people that come to see me and support me. We're literally growing old together. We are, aren't we? I mean, I'm going to get to the age of a ripe old age of like 70. And I'm still going to be touring, by the way. Don't think I'm not going to be touring. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be on that stage at 70 years old and you guys will be like 103 and we're going to be performing together. We're going to be singing and we're going to be hi am yes, hi yes soon, hi am yes, hi yes soon. Yeah, it's going to be all that, isn't it? It's going to be great. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, I'm going to do uh, a track for you because we haven't got much time left. And do you know what? I'm gutted. I'm gutted because I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed every moment of this. I really have. But uh, I'm going to be doing a little uh, number for you now. I'm going to do uh, my version of Khachaturian uh, doing Happy Birthday. Now, you know the song Happy Birthday, yeah? And I've always said to you, if Mozart did it, if Mozart did it, he would play it like this. Right now, Beethoven. Maybe the Armenians will appreciate happy birthday in the style of Khachaturian. <laughs> There you go. Now, we got any other questions before uh, we... Oh, all right. what advice do you have for my 13-year-old son, Jacob, who wants to be a screenwriter and a director? Well, get off your bum and do it. There's my, there's my, there's my advice to you. Get off your, your hairy Armenian backside, because, Jacob, if you're, if, you're in, if you're a teenager, you've definitely got a hairy bum. Get off it, get in your room, and start writing. Start writing. And then put me into your film. I'll come and do it. If you give me the role of uh, some kind of a soprano. I mean, look at the hair. I haven't been to the hairdressers. Look at this look. He's like, you're talking to me. You're talking to me. You. You. Yeah. That was my feeble attempt at doing an impression of Bill Cosby. Now, uh, any other questions? Can you share your favorite song with us? Ooh. Actually, yeah, I can, I can, I can. Uh, my favourite song is... You can never know what it's like Blood like a wind of fist, just like ice And there's a gold only light that shines from you Why the red you hide behind that mask you use? 
Did you live this book and never win? Look at me, I'm calm, but let me get a taste of love. Sip away if you need to know why I'm still standing. Just a breath away. There you go, that's one of my favourite songs. Um, so, yes, that's one of my favourite songs. In actual fact, um, recently uh, I found uh, another song that I absolutely adored, um, which is... Um, Playing on the radio Why do I start swaying to and fro? I have never heard that song before But if I don't hear it anymore It's still familiar to me Sends a thrill right through me Cause the words remind me of the night That I first fell in love with you Those magic changes My hollow Jesus oh melody, never the same old melody. Do you know the song? Greece is from Greece. That's right. And not this one. Oh, and now that person that said, why did you sing in Turkish? He's probably going to go, why are you playing Greek music now? Why are you playing Greek music? Huh? Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. What is the one thing you could not live without? My Armenian people all over the world. And that's the truth. And do you know why? Because everywhere I go around the world, all I need to do is put it on Facebook and say, I'm now in New York. And I'll get 300 people go, Dunasegu, come to my house. Have something to eat. Live with us. Don't worry. Yeah, but I, I need to go to the hotel. Forget hotel. Hotel is expensive. Come here. It's free. So my Armenian people. I've been... So blessed, so blessed to be born Armenian because I truly am. I'm blessed. I, th I think Armenian people are the greatest people in the world. Uh, I know, I know that we all have our issues and, um, you know, and the Corona Morono, uh, but in truth, the greatest people in the world and, and intelligent people as well and giving and hospitable. You know, we're, we're such great people. So, yeah, I couldn't live with, uh, without that. But if I have to be totally honest with you, I couldn't live it without my family either. I couldn't live without with my... Uh, I, 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 no, actually, hold on. Let me rephrase that. If we get that 16-year-old Swedish uh, babysitter in uh, that we're going to adopt, then I could probably live without my wife, but I couldn't live without my sons. And I couldn't live without making a kebab at least once a week on the mangal outside which is a barbecue for those. Oh, mangal. Oh, my God, I just said another Turkish word. Mary! <coughs> ah, Turkish, Turkish, we hate you, we hate you. But um, there you go. So any other questions? Uh, any other things coming up here? If not, if not, oh, uh, please don't tell me. Someone just put hi all. Please don't tell me you've just joined. I'm putting on a surge for you after the show. Sugar or no sugar? Do you know what, Hasmik? Uh, true to be known, I actually quit. True. This is true story. I quit coffee. I quit tea and I quit alcohol. Uh, it's coming up to four years now. And the only thing I drink is green tea and herbal teas. And the only thing I drink alcoholic is red wine, because I thought, well, if even if Jesus did that, you know what I mean? So I drink red wine. That's the only thing I drink. And um, and once in a while. <laughs> I can't believe I call that. Did you see that? That, not in Chilla. It won't happen again now. It won't happen again. Getsy, getsy. One more time. Head on. Ah! <laughs> Twice. Twice. There you go. So once in a while, I might do a cigar. So, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. But, um, yeah, no, I couldn't live without uh, my my twin boys, for sure. Um, I, and my, and my, my family. I love them to bits. Um, so there you go. So, But Surge and everything, uh, yeah, I, I cut it out years ago. And I can't have um, I can't have Armenian coffee. I can't. I can't. Drink. I go hyperactive. Yeah, because I suffer. Well, they label it as ADHD, uh, which I have. But um, I, you know, I, I, all in control. I don't take any tablets for it. I don't do anything for it. But um, if I had something like that, my heart rate would go through the roof, and I would start becoming even more manic than I am right now. So there you go. So um, yeah. So that's it. Now, as far as sore goes. I just want to point out 
that I think it's a great organization. Uh, we've had a conversation uh, on the phone uh, during the show. And uh, there's the donate button, by the way. www.saw middle, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever they call that, us.org. Okay. So that's what you need to go to. You need to go to that and you need to donate. And please do donate because honestly, listen, we've, We've we've only got ten orphans, um, in um, in in sorry twenty eight orphans in the uh, in in uh, South Africa in Mufalani, which we look after, and we take care of them. We we send them money and and it feeds them. You know, a hundred a hundred dollars feeds these children for like two or three months in South Africa. So you imagine what it does for Armenia. You know, as, as long as we can donate some money, that'd be amazing. And the truth of the matter is, there are people. Simple as that. Which is why I wanted to come on and do this show for Saul, because I think it's really important. But that doesn't mean I'm not open to other charities and other organizations calling me now after this show and going, Kev, Mezi Aganes. So, so absolutely, I would love to do that. Um, but in the meantime, joke to one side, um, I know there's tons of you watching. Uh, we've had nearly 4,000 people watching and we've raised uh, just over $120, uh, which is amazing. And, uh, and don't forget, I've got the DVD, which um, I've thrown somewhere. It's gone. The DVD has gone. But, um, but like I said, Jerry Manukian has got like loads of them. Uh, so if you, uh, if you want to get in touch with Jerry, Jerry, just put your email on that little um, link live comments thing. Put your uh, email there. And if anyone wants one, just go directly to him. Uh, or to me um, and let me know. But uh, I do want to say a big thank you, first and foremost, to George and Kim and Sally and everyone at SOAR for uh, believing in me and, and, and asking me to come on board and do this. I think you're great. And I think you're amazing doing what you're doing. And all the people that actually joined on, uh, including, I believe, my uh, my adopted cousin, uh, Anto Jefferjian. He's probably on there as well. If you are, Kaz, say hello. Uh, my cousin, uh, Anto a wonderful human being, uh, another guy, actually, another Armenian that um, doesn't believe there's coronavirus out there. He doesn't. He just goes out there. He, you know, he goes up to, he licks people. He goes out and licks people. He says, I'm going to prove to you there's no corona. And he just licked random, random people, random people. He's been on the news twice for uh, molesting a uh, couple of animals. But, um, but that was a different story, actually. That was nothing to do with licking. Um, but anyway, so Jerry Manukian, there you go. Burdock at packbell.net. Okay, so if you want a DVD, email him now and he'll send it to you. Uh, and all, uh, well, the cost of the um, the mailing uh, you have to pay for, because that's not fair on Jerry. But the actual um, DVD itself, whatever Jerry raises, uh, we'll, we'll donate it to the, uh, to the Saw um, uh, charity. So that would be amazing then. So now I'm going to finish off by doing something special for you on the piano. And this is. Do you see that? Shut you there. Oh, can you see the fingers moving? The wise words of Kev to finish off. First and foremost, thank you for being such incredible human beings sitting there with your fundafistas, eating away hummus, surj, I've heard. And uh, maybe a couple of you are in bed, watching in bed. You wouldn't be doing anything else anyway. So you're probably sitting there watching in bed, enjoying yourselves, uh, watching Kev, thinking, Kev's watching us. Kev's watching us. And then maybe, you know, like Jacob, he's uh, probably run upstairs now. He's probably not watching me anymore. He's probably sitting there on his uh, cute little tushy hairy bum, writing a new screenplay with me involved. Um, so that would be nice. And then all the other people, including that man who said, why did, you, why did you sing in Turkish? He's probably sitting there learning how to speak Turkish now and uh, thinking, actually, actually, I could, I'd love to do that. I'd love to learn a new language. But uh, whatever you're doing out there, guys, uh, Guyane, thank you, darling, for being so wonderful and actually inputting so much of your time and disturbing my show where I keep having to answer your questions. Uh, it was a joy, actually, to answer your questions. Like We've got like nearly 6,000 people watching and you're the only one constantly coming up on my screen. Great. Oh, there she is again. Thank you, Kev, for doing this for Saw. You, you both are very special. You both are very special.
Who else are you seeing, Guyana? Are you seeing something? Are you seeing a ghost? Okay. You're a bit weird, but there you go. Uh, what does it say there? Yeah, uh, special. And I hope that everyone will be encouraged to help out orphans in Armenia. I am your fan and saw forever. Oh, God. That's another one now I'm going to see when I go to a show. You remember me. I'm Guyane. I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I spoke to you online. No, no, I don't remember you. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's probably going to be one of those, isn't it? Anyway, people. Damn it. I'm going to do this, but get see bit. <laughs> Three times. Right. So I'm going to finish off by doing this boogie woogie number. Guys, you've been amazing. I think we've got to do this again. Tell me if I'm wrong. Go to my official, Kev Orkian official on Facebook. And if you think we should do another one of these and uh, maybe raise money for another charity or do something else special, let me know. I think we should do this more. I think I should do this once a week. I think I should do this once a week for the rest of the year. And we should dedicate it to one charity every single week for a different Armenian charity. I think we should do this, don't you? If you think we should do this, it'd be great. And every week I have to come on with something different. Okay. Oh, by the way, you know when I said to you, I'm not wearing anything underneath? Get ready. All the children, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. I'm joking. I've got all my clothes on. So anyway, uh, I'm going to finish off by doing this boogie winger number. I love you all, each and every one of you. And Suzanne, I still don't remember who you are. Um, so I'm going to finish off by doing this. I love you all. I want to say a massive thank you to Saw. Let's raise lots of money. I want to say a massive thank you to Jerry for actually putting uh, his details on this uh, on this page and uh, and everyone seeing it so they can now uh, get in touch with him when they've got the corona because he's obviously a chief medical um, you know advisor. He's probably going to be bombarded with all your emails. Um, there it is again, Jerry. <laughs> They're going to be like, Jerry, Jerry, I'm dying. I have a cough. What should I do? What should I do? I'll tell you what you should do. Take him. Take a throat sweet and get lost. And a massive thank you to Nick Farmer. He's my business partner and he's the guy that's been putting all these messages and working and making this so wonderfully smooth. Uh, and I'd also like to thank my invisible friend, that guy, and I think I have. <laughs> so well done to you as well. Hey, Corona, Corona, gets you up. Gets you, gets you. Gets you. That's it. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to finish off by doing this boogie boogie number. Take care. I love you all. I will always love all of you. And, and I hope to see you this year. If we can't make it this year, then next year for sure. And don't forget, Armenia Uncovered comes out next week on Amazon Prime. So go to Kev Orkan Official and you can check it out. Here we're going to go. Get see, let me put this in my mouth. It makes me look more boogie woogie. It makes me look a little bit like uh, those jazz people from those, you know, those Mississippi years. That's racist. <laughs> Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah, let's go fast. Let's go, let's go fast. Let's go fast. What? Good night, stay safe, and I love each and every one of you. Bachikner. Bye bye for now.